I would now like to look at effects. We've been learning and how to edit sounds using basic edit functions. We'll now look at effects. Effects functions enable us to manipulate sounds. These commands are similar to a font menu commands in a worm processor. For example, using font commands you can change the size of the letters. Change volume is the simplest volume effect and is just like a volume knob on a stereo. Edit effects volume. These are our volume effects we have available. We have the volume given in decibels. Positive values increase the value. So that's positive increase. Zero is no change. And negative values decrease the volume. If you are unfamiliar with the decibel scale, you can use the percentage scale here. If you click on the percentage, 6 dB is double, 200%. Minus 6 dB is half the volume, 50%. You can just select the percentage. If you click OK, that will reduce the volume. Another volume effect is the maximize volume. Volume, maximize volume. This increases the volume as high as possible without distortion, sometimes referred to as normalizing. However, peaks in the sound will limit how loud the sound can be turned up. Let's have a look at the presets. Full dynamic range that maximizes the sound. Click OK. And it turns most of the sound up. And in this part here you see a peak. So that will be the maximum that will be able to turn the sound up. To make the sound level as loud as possible, we can use something called auto gain. So again, if we go to volume, auto gain, this effect automatically evens out and maximizes the volume within the selection to bring it to a constant level. The primary setting is the target volume, this one here. Again, we can set it a maximum of 75%, for example. This controls the final volume of the audio. The output settings, the other settings control how often the volume changes. And the silence controls the level at which no gain should be applied. So if you have a lot of background noise, I'd choose a larger value, say minus 18 or minus 20 dB. If you don't have much background noise, I'd choose a smaller value, say minus 40 dB. We'll leave the defaults as they are and apply that. You can see the result is you get a much larger signal and it's fairly consistent right across. This is great for, for maximizing your audio and making it as loud as possible. Fade in and fade out generally increase and decrease the volume throughout the selection. If we select, have a selection at the beginning, we can use fade in and fade out. Well, let's do a fade in in our case. The presets I, rec I recommend here is silence to full volume linear. And we'll just apply that and see what it sounds like. You can see that the signal gradually increases. There are quite a few filter effect functions that are quite useful. These are the filter effect functions. We'll just touch on a few now. The equalizer. Boost or reduces fixed frequency bands using a 7-band equalizer. You can choose one of the presets or adjust the sliders to make a custom filter. So, for example, we can boost the bass and that's increased the bass sliders and see how it plays. I'd also like to mention this play button. So you can choose a filter, equal loudness, for example, and hit play. One, two. And it'll play the selection back and you'll be able to preview it without actually applying it. Goldwave also has some great restoration filters. So in our filters we've got uh, noise reduction and pop and click. Let's try the pop and click. To remove pops and clicks we can use this pop and click filter 
To start with, a tolerance of a thousand is recommended. If some clicks still remain after you apply this filter, you can select shorter selections of audio and use the pop click filter again to lower the tolerance setting. To remove hiss, hum and buzz, use the noise reduction filter. We need to find a selection such as this, which was just background noise. Uh, then we copy that to the clipboard because this noise reduction filter you can use the clipboard copy so that is copied in that section of sound is copied into the clipboard we select all of the sound we choose the filter noise reduction use the preset clipboard noise print and the blue line there indicates the noise filter that this is calculated based on that background noise that we selected. If we click OK, you can see that most of the noise now has gone between the different counts of the woman talking. Another filter effect I sometimes use is silence reduction. This is great for reducing the silence between when a speaker speaks different syllables or sentences. Let's try it. Effects, Filter, Silence Reduction. If we just choose the preset, eliminate all silences, and then it's good to experiment a little with this one. I like to change the duration so there is some pause between syllables. I like to reduce it about 20% instead of deleting the spaces altogether and I set the maximum length of a silence to th uh, three seconds. If I click OK, you can see that the silence between the counts is now much smaller. And if we play that, we'll hear her speak count much quicker. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's great for shortening a long speech where a speaker may pause often. So far, we've covered all the basics of GoWave. There's just one thing for us to look at, that's saving our sound files and the different form waves that Goldwave can work with. If we select File Save As, we'll be able to see the many formats that Goldwave can save our files as. When we choose a format, say MP3, then we have attributes that change. And we can select the different attributes that you want. Simply put, most of the file types have a kilobit per second value. The smaller the value, the more compressed and lower quality the sound. The higher the value, the better the sound will be. When saving the file, you also have two different types of file. One is a compressed format, one is uncompressed. A compressed file will lose some information but be much smaller. If you edit a compressed file and then save it again and compressed, it will lose quality every time you edit and open that file. So for editing and mastering files, I recommend Windows Media Audio and selecting one of the lossless codecs or using the open source FLAC lossless codec and that will save the file in a lossless file format. When you're ready to put the file on the web, then you save it to an MP3 format and you select the desired kilobits per second compression that you would like. We've come to the end of our seminar. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and got something from it. Thank you.